Okay, stand up and be counted. Very cool. Nation at war. Campaign. Oh, wow. I'm speaking tonight. I'm sorry? I'm speaking tonight. Oh, okay, excellent. And what's your name? Patrick Henry. Any words for you, people out there in YouTube land? Just remember the sacrifices the Founding Fathers made to give you the freedoms that you have today. And don't let go of them. And do your research on the Founding Fathers. You find they were strong men of faith in God. They weren't being so strong Christians. And that this nation was founded on godly Christian principles. And what, what organization are you with, uh, Patrick Henry? It's a ministry I have called Founding Fathers Ministries, where I portray George Washington and Patrick Henry, and I speak 19 years for churches, schools, and conventions all and, over America. And what is your website? Do you have a website? www.hurley.org. Patriot, patriot.org. Okay, and can people contact you by email? Yes, they can. They can do it through my website. My email address is on there, lhurley55 gmail.com. Okay, excellent. Excellent. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Very nice. Cool tie. You're going to put this on YouTube? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I'm, work, I'm with Freedom's Phoenix. With Freedom's Phoenix, you know, Ernie Hancock over here. Yeah, Ernie over there. So I'm a sales manager. I also do, you know, citizen journalism type stuff. So, very cool. And so you have books you've written. Okay. And can you tell us about the books? Uh, Mr. Hurley, what is it? What is Dr. Hurley. Dr. Hurley, Dr. Hurley. Well, this book, America's Christian Freedom. Speak up a little bit because it's got a lot of volume going on. America's Christian Heritage, Fact or Fiction. This is a short course on Christian American history going all the way back to Columbus, who was a very strong Christian who sailed blindly, trusting God would take him to the new land. And it goes all the way through the Continental Congresses, Declaration of Independence, the Constitutional Convention, and through and exposes the lie of separation church and state. Uh, this book, Endangered Documents, has got the uh, Constitution, Bill of Rights, uh, all four verses of the National Anthem. Patrick Henry's Give Me Liberty, Give Me Death speech, George Washington's farewell address, and there's a patriotic poem at the end called A Plea from the Past. Uh, these, I call this Dinger Documents because most schools don't even teach from these documents anymore. And where can they go to get these books? They can contact me through my website. Which is? www.hurleypatriot.org Okay, well thank you very much. Thank you. All right, pound it. All right. Thank you so much. What are the ties going for? Uh, ties are going for 20. Okay. And then you also have uh, DVDs. Now these are live presentations. Uh, live presentation. The huge church I did in uh, New Jersey. Besides myself, they had nine other people in full colonial costume. And it's, it's uh, probably the closest thing to a Hollywood production I'll ever be involved in. And then also with this is the Bill of Rights presentation I'll do similar to tonight. Excellent. And then this is a George Washington. I'm actually related to George Washington. Okay. Uh, this is a Thanksgiving Day message, and it talks about his experiences during the war, and it proves what a godly Christian man George Washington was. Thank you so much. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Dr. Lance Hurley is a graduate of the University of Texas with a major in history and a minor in speech and drama. He is the ordained minister and has a doctorate from the Phoenix University of Theology. He served his country as a chaplain in the United States Marine Corps. His military specialty, specialty was intelligence, and the FBI offered him an appointment as a special agent. He has written two books, America's Christian Heritage, Back to Fiction, and Endangered Documents. His third book, Christian America, Come Back to Me, will be out soon. These books and other materials are available at his table in the back. Please stop me and say hello. Dr. Hurley is in his 19th year of ministry. Portrays both George Washington and Patrick Henry. His authentic, in character presentations are designed to educate Americans about the true Christian heritage of our country and the strong beliefs of our founding fathers. He spoke at the Constitution Party National Convention and the John Birch Society 50th Anniversary Convention. He has spoken before the Arizona House and Senate and three different state capitals on National Day of Prayer in churches, schools, and conventions all over America. 
has also taught American history at a Christian homeschool co-op. His direct answer, ancestor was a drummer in the Continental Army, and he is actually distantly related to George Washington. Freedom's Foundation at Valley Forge has awarded him the George Washington Honor Medal. Please welcome the voice of the American Revolution, Commander-in-Chief of the Virginia Militia, six-term governor of the Commonwealth of Virginia, co-author of the Bill of Rights, Patrick Henry. Good evening. First people know a little about the other than maybe the seven words. Why did I say it? Where did I say it? When did I say it? I thought the approach shares a little bit with you about my life. I was a delegate to your first Continental Congress. In fact, if you would go to Carpenter's Hall today, you would see a quote from me outside, and it says, From this moment forward, we are no longer New Yorkers, Delawareans, Rhode Islanders. I am no longer a Virginian. I am an American. Yeah. 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 At the second Continental Congress, John Adams, your second president, said of me, of all the men in Congress, there was just but one man, Patrick Henry, who appeared to me to have a sense of the precipice of the danger upon which we stood and had the courage and the ability to address it. There's a possibility I could have been your second cousin. George Washington and I were very close friends. In fact, my wife and his wife were first cousins. He offered me the position of Secretary of State, which I turned down. Ambassador to Spain, Ambassador to France. I also turned down the opportunity to be Chief Justice of the United States Supreme Court. I had no political ambition outside of my state of Virginia. And I have served more terms as governor than any other governor in the history of the country. In 1765, King George the Throne comes to the throne. I, on my 29th birthday, having been a member of the Virginia Congressional District for only five days, the step back to I wrote my memoirs. I kept waiting for people, men of weight, to speak against this horrendous legislation, but since nobody did it, and I was young and naive and foolish, I wrote out seven resolutions against it. I stood up and spoke against it and said, concluded with, if Caesar had his Brutus, King George had to come out and King George III pay profit from their example. And this got carried throughout all the colonies. It didn't stop King George III, though. We go through 10 years of aggressive taxation. And now all eyes are on Virginia. We were the largest colony at the time. Most of the leaders were from Virginia. And watch and see what we're going to do. So in late March 1775, we had a convention at St. John's Episcopal Church in Richmond. And I made a motion for the immediate armament of the militia. And tonight, ladies and gentlemen, you are going to have an opportunity to vote on my motion. So listen to my summation speech. I think you can still vote in your country. I'm not sure if you still have that privilege. <laughs> And it's by voice, voice vote only. My motion to raise a militia, although with crowds of trees and trees, was seconded by Thomas Jefferson and George Washington. I'm only going to give you half of it because in the absence of time, I want to speak a lot about your Bill of Rights. So this is about halfway into my summation speech for this motion. We have done everything that could be done to avert this storm that's approaching. We have petitioned. We've remonstrated, we've supplicated, and we've cast ourselves at the foot of the throne and begged its inner position to resist the tyrannical hands of Parliament and the ministry. Our petitions, slight. Our remonstrances, further insult, physical violence. Our supplications, disregarded, and we've been spurned with contempt at the foot of the throne. In vain, after these things, do some of you have fond delusions? of hope. There's no longer any room for hope if we would be free. If we mean to hold in fire those inestimable privileges for which we have so long contended. If we mean not basically to abandon the noble cause for which we have so long endured and to which we have pledged ourselves never to abandon until the glorious object of our contest shall be obtained, then we must fight! Amen. I repeat it, we must fight! Amen. A call to arms and a pew of 
the God of hosts is all that we have planned. Now some of you say, we are too weak, unable to fight such a portable enemy. Well then, when are we going to be stronger? Next week? Next year? Will it be when we are totally disarmed and a British soldier is stationed in every house? Shall we gather strength by your resolution and in action? Or shall we acquire the means of effectual resistance by lying supinely on our backs, hugging the news and found with hope until our enemies have bound us hand and foot? We are not weak if we would but make use of the natural resources which the God of nature has placed at our disposal. Three millions of people armed in the glorious cause of liberty. We are invincible against any force which our enemies can send against us. And besides, we do not fight our battles alone. Because there is a just God who presides over the destinies of nations. Raise up friends. Fight our battles for us. Besides, the battle does not go to the strong alone. It goes to the active, the vigilant, and the brave. So it's time for an election. Even if we were basing on the desire, there could be no retreat now from this contest. A retreat now would be in chains and slavery, or chains are forged. Their clanking may be heard on the plains of Boston, and more, it's inevitable. And I say, let it come. I repeat, let it come. It's really vain to insinuate this matter. Some of you may cry, hey, hey. There is no peace. The war has actually begun. The next clash from the north going to bring to our ears the sound of resounding arms. And our brethren, they're already in the field. So why are we standing here idle? <clears throat> what is it you wish? What would you have? Is life so dear or peace so sweet as to be purchased at the price of chains and slavery? Forbid all my God. I know not what course others of you may take, but as for me, give me liberty. Or give me 